Hello, everybody! Let's play a game! Shall we, Miraja? Please! It's been a long time since anyone has. The sun was about to set when we caught a glimpse of a pirate ensign fluttering from the ship approaching the horizon. Pirate ho! Oh, I hope he's not offended that I called him a hole. Damn my luck! It was my last trip on the Kingston Southampton route. The following month, after a short leave, I was supposed to leave the Navy and join the 5th Northumberland Rifle Regiment of Her Majesty's Infantry Army. Unlike those other armies. So far, my run-ins with pirates had been minimal. And on land, those damn land pirates! Why did I have such bad luck just then? The entire crew of the HMS Justice fought as one man under the command of Lieutenant... In command of the frigate. That's my favorite lieutenant. Lieutenant in command of the frigate. Oh, well, all the times I fought under him. But after an hour, the outcome of the fight was quite clear. Boys were not doing well. The pirates, were the, with, although with worse pistols, had better siege weapons. And were incredibly fast. Stopped the cannoning all over me. As my companions fell around me, I cursed. Damn, fuck, fuck balls. And tried to decide my fate. I had two options before me. The first was to fight to the death trying to take as many privateers as possible. Is it wrong? I was thinking about their privates. I had a, I had a good life. <laughs> I'd like to imagine I'm on the edge of the ship thinking this. Should I fight to my death while everyone's dying around me? Or should I? <laughs> I had a good life, although not as long as I would have liked. That's what she said. And I had never imagined of dying of old age in my bed anyway. So why not? It was an honorable option. The second option involved disclosing my status as the ship's doctor. Having studied medicine before entering the Navy, I served double duty on the ship and I knew they wouldn't kill me knowing I was a doctor. They called me Bones. Medicine was prized at sea. The problem was that, that option was basically a slavery sentence. Once they got a hold of me, the pirates would never let me go with the strong, muscly arms, not even for ransom. I'm going to disclose I'm a doctor because I'm a coward. Hey, y'all, I'm Dr. Bones. I raised my hand without letting go of my sword and yelled. L L Lieutenant Ian Smith, medical do doctor, I yeah. The pirate in front of me looked more surprised than me. But it was too late. He withdrew his sword from my juggler and his weapon was completely covered in blood, my blood. The battle had finished for me. I heard distant yells. You fought like a douche, you coward. More distant by the minute, but my sight was blurring. I didn't even feel my knees buckling when my dying body felt like a sack of potatoes. God, I suck at this game. <laughs> that was quick. I mean, what really happened, what really happened was I don't suck at the game, and I'm a brave doctor who wants to go get him. Little English fight. I spat angrily, up to me, and went to kill, or be killed like a manly man. However, a few hours later, I was among the survivors of the fight, tied up like a blood sausage on a pirate ship. It wasn't me who had sung, but one of my subordinates. Damn them. Damn them to hell and Hades. Daddies. The boy had done it in good faith to save my life, but now I was sitting on the deck of a ship. Oh, man, someone needs to clean my poop deck. Watching the silver waves in the moonlight while my frigate was lost in the distance with what little was left of her crew. I made a mental farewell to the Southampton and the 5th Rifle Regiment, as well as seeing my parents and my fiancé again. Well, bye. All in all, I guess being dead would be even worse. At least a little worse. I can still eat sandwiches. I got that going for me. Hard, do you believe that, Doctor? In that case, you value your life too much. <laughs> I turned my head towards the voice as the ties prevented me from turning my body. Wh what's that mean? Should I be dead? And besides, how do you know what I was thinking? Get out of my brain! He looked so dashing. The man came to my side and leaned on the deck parapet, blowing. Oh, yes, you can blow the elegant smoke rings from his pipe. That's going to give you cancer, you moron. He was a man slightly younger than me, though his voice sounded like he was around middle age. But he was probably around 27. Tall and strong, and with a distinguished appearance that his pirate attire couldn't disguise. You mean because <laughs> he's got an open shirt and those clothes can't hide his man titties? 
Or isn't it obvious, or what could you be wondering as you watch your frigate sail away towards England? Oh, oh, what's an ing in anyway? I understand land, but what's an ing? I bet you're mentally saying goodbye to your motherland. I grunted, oh, uh, neither denying nor affirming anything for the motherland. The tall man ignored me for a while, concentrating on his smoking pipe. Oh, why don't you blow me like your pipe? Then he glanced at me. Oh, I was kidding. I was kidding. Please don't look at me. With curiosity at the same time that he studied me with a frown. Oh, I don't... It's all right I said goodbye to my parents because now you can judge me for my bad life decisions. I don't have baggage. Arr, I wonder why you joined the Navy being a doctor. Hmm. Maybe something made you lose faith in medicine, huh? <laughs> Did you lose someone close to you due to illness? Your father, perhaps? I will not call you daddy. Although I was impressed by his intuition, I refused to open my mouth. I wondered what the hell the pirate was looking at, studying me so blatantly. Take your pervert eyes off of my body. Suddenly, the ma man smiled, showing his teeth. He should have, like, super yellow teeth. Arr, I know. The person who died was your fiancé. No. Uh. I felt as if a sledgehammer hit me on the head as the memory of Eliza. Oh. Oh, as I thought of her. As a very painful memory. And yet, aside from the pain expression on my face, my reaction was to open my mouth in surprise, unable to react. I was totally emotionless, except for the surprise on my face and my gaping mouth. Oh. How? It's amazing! How are you doing? I would be... I'm the idiot that would be on the reality show that gets taken by every fucking medium con artist. Someone in your life is going to have something bad to them. Do you know anything about blue? My family wears blue! Take all my money! How? Pirates, it's amazing! What are you... How are you doing that? How can you know? Are you a mind reader? Pirate grunted in satisfaction. <sighs> and puffed out his chest. Puff! Arr, the same way, I know ye father was also a doctor, that you grew up in the country, and that you are currently engaged to another woman. You are fiancé slut. Arr. Maybe. Don't worry about that. I'm sure the Navy will inform the young lady of the current situation. She won't mind breaking off the engagement and finding another suitor. Hey, no. Dating is hard. I like my PB. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, my confused mind tried to exclaim because everything the pirate had said was true. You think everyone else on this pirate ship is just staring at us as we have this moment where he reads my mind and tell me all my deepest personal history? And what the hell was he implying about my fiance? She won't forget me, whatever her name was. Was he confirming that they would never let me go as I suspected? Ah, nice situation I was in. Have, have we met before, pirate man? Arr, not to me knowledge. These are things that anyone with a pair of eyes can observe. You're like the Sherlock Holmes of pirates. Your build. That mark on your finger that doesn't match the engagement ring you're wearing. Wow. He is the Sherlock Holmes of pirates. And in that case, I take your ha my hat off to you with your, your observation skills. I'm flustered. The tall man moved closer to me. <laughs> Do I understand ye that I haven't made any mistakes? Let me add that you don't have any or many feelings even for your fiancé, given your feeble reaction. It's not feeble. I certainly miss woman vagina pants, whatever her name was. Tits McGee is my favorite. As you said before, my previous fiancé, Eliza, died of tuberculosis five years ago. She was the love of my life, but one is supposed to get married. And so I told Tits McGee I will settle for you. Poor Tits McGee. I really feel bad. Yeah, you're my consolation prize. Hey, did I tell you about my dead fiance? She probably had to hear about that all the time. I think maybe this pirate did a favor for our fiance. Pirate shrugged because he. Don't you care about my stories? Come on, pirate man. Arr, I don't care much about what is supposed to do. Wait, what? I've been drinking me grog. I don't care much about what is supposed to do. To tell the truth. Right, if you did, you wouldn't be a pirate. Ha ha ha, I've judged you. And despite myself, I realized I was smiling. <laughs> my, my, my compatriots from my unit are dead. I have watched people die around me. And I'm like, ah, this guy, this guy over here, he gets me, he gets me. 
Look, I'm glad you're giving me conversation, but I'd appreciate continuing it elsewhere. Let's say more undercovers. I mean, cover! Cover! Those clouds presage a storm in an hour at the most, and these ropes are ridiculous! What kind- What were you thinking with these ropes? Utterly ridiculous. Sir! It's not like I have- in, It's not like I have anywhere to go. I gotta jump overboard and swim to the ship where all my friends are. Alright, suppose ye may be right. And putting this pipe away, he stooped leisurely to untie me. I'm free, you bastard! <laughs> Thanks, and also, since I suppose you already know who I am, I would be very grateful to know the name of my interlocutor. Arr, I don't know these, this word. You're the guy who you, you imprisoned me. You interlocked me. Arr, arr, arr. The man chuckled briefly and took off his hat in a derisive salute. Wait, are you making fun of me? Arr, Henry Plank, captain of the Brave Yukona at your service. Brave Yukona? Is that some anime name, bro? The smile faded from my face. I, I, I'm a dead man walking, I thought. I must know of this guy. He must be like a badass pirate. Oh, look at his ready room. It is wonderful. The captain took me to the Orlop deck and introduced me to the crew. They're ghosts. He has no friends. He's just a lonely pirate. Then he made me sit in the officer's room where everyone patted me on the back and welcomed me to the ship. Well, good job getting captured, you wuss! Oh, thank you, yes. I'm very good at getting captured. I've been working on it. Thank you, it's nice of you to notice. We were served salted beef, my favorite! Pickled carrots, less favorite, and light beer! I would like a more manly beer, but alright. Wait! Light beer! I'm starting to suspect these pirates aren't straight! And the dinner began with a festive- or began with a festive atmosphere. The spirits were high after the victory over the English army ship. Oh, those army ships! Arr, you see, in deep thought, I almost called you Cracker. You're white, too. Doctor. I swallowed gulp. Arr, I like to see that. What? Terrified, the Captain Plank would guess my thoughts just as he had guessed so much about my life. Because I was considering it that, you know, if a few hours ago, I thought that a meeting... A pirate ship on my last voyage with the Navy, that was bad luck and I was a little flustered and I was a little bit all over the place. Like every day of my life, am I right, girls? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> now that I knew the name of my captor. I love captor com, com games. I fucked that up. Pretend I didn't fuck it up. Ha ha ha! In the comments! Ha ha ha! I was convinced that there were three Grim Reapers rolling on the floor with laughter at my expense. I don't have self-esteem issues. They're all laughing at me. They're all gonna laugh at you. Because not a week ago, I had participated as a jury member in a trial. Man, I have a lot of shit going on in my life. Which had resulted in the unanimous verdict of the death sentence of the defendant, a certain Captain James Plank, on charges of piracy against the British Crown. Oh, this is going to be awkward. You know what, <clears throat> James, this is such a funny coincidence. Because I was on the jury that, you know, we convicted you, so they got to, like, hang you and stuff. Sorry. And said captain was known to have a brother. Oh, no. Oh, God, this isn't the same one. It's his... Oh. Who was also a pirate. It was... Had very few scruples. Oh, to the point of earning the nickname of Bloody Henry? I hope that's why he learned the... Has the nickname. You're not gonna ravage my poop deck, are you? <laughs> I hope that's not why you're called Bloody Henry. A cold sweat began to run down my back. Oh, oh, look at the time. A look of bewilderment. In those aloof brownish eyes, I might have murdered your brother, but your dreamboat. I wondered if the news of his brother's execution had reached him by now. I feel like our character is a bit of an a selfish ass. <laughs> yeah, my old fiance died. I got a new one. You got to do what you got to do. You know, I killed this guy's brother, but you know, I think maybe I'd want to bone him. You know, maybe. Are there any lady parts on the ship? I'm asking for me personally, not for the character. I would like some lady pirate vag, please. And if so, if he had also received the details of his brother's trial. Captain Plank would have my name if he didn't have it yet. So once he learned of my jury duty, there would be no mercy. Uh-oh. I would die a horrible death by lynching or worse. Perhaps they would whip me and then leave me tied to death on the deck. Oh, don't tie me to your dick. I mean, deck splashing my back with salt water. That would sting. From time to time to add to my pain. The pain of it all. I shuddered and tried to remain calm. I had to hide. I, I'd think of something later, when I didn't have Plank's dreamy boat, dream boat eyes on me, studying my very movement. 
Um, excuse me, Captain. The day has been long, and the events haven't favored me. If you haven't noticed, my friends have been murdered by you. Plank nodded, his gaze still fixed on me. He finally seemed to relax and began to eat. I did too. I struck up a conversation with the other officers, the ones whose brothers I didn't have killed. Though I was still watching the captain out of the corner of my eye, who was watching me back. Now that I could see him in a better light, I had to admit that Plank had a handsome figure. His soldiers, or shoulders, not soldiers, sorry, were quite broad, and his hands were large. Oh, that's the way I like him. You know what? Eliza didn't die. She realized I like I bat for the other team, and she's like, I died, Henry. I'm leaving. Wait, what was my name again? I'm like, oh my god, she died. And my mom's like, yeah, I'm sure she died. Wait, his shoulders were quite broad, and his hands were large and strong, full of calluses and chafing. Calluses? Do you play the guitar too, bro? Play me a song. Carry me, caravan. Take me away. Take me to Portugal. Take me to Spain. I bet it he was good with a sword. His movements were nimble and springy like a cat's, though that was in keeping with that first impression of a high birth that I had. I don't I don't know, when you see a cat, you think highborn person? Maybe. Maybe the Egyptians did. I didn't know the details of the bi bi biography. Trust me, people, I know how to read. I like reading the bibliographies. I was reading one recently about Ulysses F. Grant. Um... What? The bibiabibis of late James Plank. But he also had that same air of distinction. That's what I tell people when I fart. It's an air of distinction. But neither James Plank nor anyone else had were those curious, almond-shaped eyes of a honey shade that sometimes seemed brown and sometimes seemed golden. Eyes that seemed to penetrate the depths of the soul until it was bare. I really think our guy is a little self-absolved. Shouldn't we still be thinking about the brother dead? We're just like, oh, those dreamboat eyes. Ah. I realized I was blushing without knowing why. See, our new fiance, she's not going to be surprised. She's not going to be surprised when we didn't return from sea. They'll be like, well, a bunch of butt pirates attacked us. Yes, and he was captured by them, wasn't he? I mean, he fought very, yeah, I'm sure he fought very hard. When dinner was over, the sailors pushed the tables into the orlop deck aside and began to set up the hammocks. I love ham! They told me which one I could use, and after a while playing cards and dice, everyone went to sleep, except those who were on guard. I know I'm having a lot of fun with the whole theme and the sexual jokes, but I want to stop for a moment. I don't normally do this in the middle of an LP, but I gotta say, so far, I'm really digging the writing, I'm digging the music, and I'm digging the kind of characters in the setting. It's pretty cool. Back to me being lewd! <laughs> I watched as the captain gave me one last look across the deck before turning and disappearing behind his cabin door. What's he going to do in there? The following days were hectic. If I had thought for a moment that life on a pirate ship was more relaxed than a navy sailboat, I was completely wrong. What was I thinking? Every day I had my dose of scurvy patience. My dumb brain, because I don't like to read everything, my brain's like, every day I had my dose of scurvy. Time for my scurvy today. No, Paul, there's more to the sentence. Nope, <laughs> I'm going to have some scurvy. <laughs> well, my skin turning colors. I just had a giant coughing fit that I edited it out. It was the gods cursing me for making fun of scurvy. Every day I had my dose of scurvy patients to take care of and medicate. And also, of course, medicate. Am I just giving them a lime? Ah, I'm Dr. Lime. Of course, heat stroke. Hands burned by ropes, fingers broken by work on the mast, various cuts. They can work my mast. When they carried out an attack, in addition to being forced to participate actively... Wait, so I'm murdering innocent people? Not my fault, they made me. Though that did happen in real life, where people were pressed into the service. I then had the extra work of caring for those wounded in combat. I'm a pirate mommy. And when all the wounded were taken care of, generally the second in command would put me to mend the sails, assuming that being a surgeon, I was good at sewing. When night came, I was always so exhausted that I barely managed to play a hand or two of poker before retiring to my hammock. Captain Plank was still watching me, and I usually woke several times during the night, uneasy, feeling a hand approaching threateningly towards my neck. Don't stroke me! I mean, choke me! <laughs> but when... <laughs> This is why you walk away, that guy's weird over there. 
But when I woke up, there were no only snoring shadows around me, and everything was quiet. However, I wasn't safe, and never would I be until I managed to escape from the Bravo Kona. I had come up with a plan quite simple to try and escape the next time we reached a port. But to my dismay, with each attack, we emptied almost completely the cargo of the enemy ships, so our provis provisions never dwindled to the point of needing urgent supplies. Damn our efficiency! And every time the ship received a carrier pigeon, my heart skipped a beat. And I said to myself, it will be today! Today will be my last day! I would like to imagine our guy tries to tie herself to the carrier pigeon, hoping it carries us away, but it doesn't. Oh. I'm playing a visual novel. There's like one thing, you, like maybe three buttons you don't need to hit. And my dumb ass hit it. I don't, I don't know how to play a visual novel. But the captain read the messages, crumpled them, and burned them. Never commenting on anything to anyone. Oh, he's got secret correspondence. He was a mysterious man, the captain. Little by little, I got to know him more. Since every night before dinner, we used to end up meeting on the deck. Like that first night. Arr, I hope you're adjusting well to the new life on board of the Bravo Kona, Doctor. I can't complain. Laundry service isn't up to my standards in my home of York, where I invented peppermint patties. Ha <laughs> ha! He doesn't get it. But in general, everything is acceptable. Arr, a pirate laugh. And the guys, are the crew treating ye all right? <laughs> Um, yes, they seem grateful to have a doctor on board. Ah, that's good. Soon he became silent, biting his lower lip and staring at the waves with a concentrated expression. It seemed to me that he was desperately searching for conversation starters. This is what you don't see in pirate movies or books. What about when Blackbeard... Yeah, we hear about when Blackbeard put his gun under the table and shot somebody else because he was fucking around, or when he had syphilis and... Um, <laughs> what was it, Charleston? He set siege to. But what about the time when Blackbeard was awkwardly trying to make conversation with a crewmate and he just didn't know what to say? What about then? We don't think about Blackbeard then, do we? Maybe we should. He wasn't very good at small talk. Did you know that I once held a human heart in my hands for over an hour? How is that? Wait, that's what my character said. How is that good? How is that good small talk? And we're judging him for his small talk? That's creepy talk. Maybe he's quiet because he's scared of us. Arr, a beating heart. I nodded with pride. Yes. Like the Jack Nicholson slow nod. The patient had a bullet lodged between his left ventricle and a rib. We had to retire the heart, extract the bullet, and repair all the damage to the area. And I just liked holding his heart to play God. Oh, and meanwhile, the heart didn't stop beating. Probably because I'm powerful. Are incredible! Oh. You don't believe me? Yes, yes, I do. How did it feel? <laughs> uh, it felt like having a live animal in my hand—a frog, maybe. But you don't have to take my word. Don't take it to heart. <laughs> the captain nodded with wonder at my shitty joke. Our medicine is a curious field, or a bi-curious field. Did you know the Aztecs and the Mayans used steam baths to treat gout, rheumatism, pneumonia? And many diseases of the skin. Oh, he's going to try and sell me on a timeshare somewhere in the, the Yucatan. That's what he's trying to do. I don't want to... No, I don't want a timeshare. Sorry. Seriously, did it work? Har, I tried it myself. Many American tribes still use them. I experienced it with a Navajo from Arizona. What? You are all over the fucking place. You were in Arizona with the Navajos, but you're talking about the Mayans and the Aztecs in Mexico? Arr, the wizard doctors used masks and other paraphernalia. Arr, I think it's a magic word to make their treatments look good and gain the trust of the patient. But in fact, I think you'd like to check it out for yourself. How advanced some of the treatments are. Are you, you going to sell our fucking boat to Arizona? Yeah, I'm, wa I'm waiting to see that. Arr, for example, did you know that in the Indian region, they can su successfully carry out trepanations... Dude, that's drilling a hole in somebody's head. I don't think that's good for them. Successfully, I find that hard to believe. Whenever I drill holes in people like my fiance, they die. I mean, that didn't happen to Eliza. Arr, that's right. They treat cranial fractures that way. Oh, they'd be fateful, uh, fateful otherwise. Okay, yeah, maybe that's the one time where you would do it, but... 
the exchange humans are weird creatures <laughs> somewhere along the line of history some humans are like hey what if we drill some holes in our head yeah we gotta do that <laughs> the exchange of such stories fascinated Henry Plank however pirate legends were sorely lacking I was right after all and it turned out that the Planks were a wealthy family hailing from Brittany and with a manor house in Essex and all Henry Plank had studied at Cambridge under th did he perform in the footlights Please tell me somebody knows that reference. I never managed to find out. Some of the pythons did. I never managed to find out what exactly. A bit of theology, a bit of law, a bit of medicine, it seemed. I love my doctor, lawyer. What was the last one? Thingy? Obviously, my brain cannot hold three things in it at one time. The captain had an encyclopedia knowledge. I gave you some extra syllables. Enjoy that value. Which often left me speechless in amazement. At some point during those weeks, we'd started to get acquainted. And then the Dean's wife fell on her face, and her wig went flying. Oh, that whore! Her, that was mean. <laughs> but she was wearing a wig, her. <laughs> she had poor thin hair, most likely inferior genetics. She got on her feet with dignity, picked her wig up, and left, walking like a duchess, as if nothing has happened. Ah, Ian. Isn't that really fun? I wish I, I should have put a shot at me. I'm bald. Is it funny to make fun of people who have thinning hair? They're people too, Ian. Not bitter. I mean... Har, 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 har. Stupid baldies. Not you too, Captain Henry. Arr. I wish that had happened to my dean in Cambridge. But sadly, he wasn't married. Huh? Whoa? Arr, the men made me life miserable. And I don't even know why. I should probably have a more up-class accent but it's too late it's for the uh the feeling you know the theme yeah i get it it's it's brandy pirate brandy or they'd kick me out of the pirate union of their eyes you surely did something or i was a model student all i did was comment during a christmas dinner with the rector that the volume of the decreptum gratania the dean was so proud of was a fake oh <laughs> no no wonder he didn't like you then I don't know what they're talking about. I'm too stupid. But these guys get it. Arr! Was it wrong to say it aloud? Should I let him keep showing off a mere forgery? I don't care, dude. I didn't do none of them book learnings. Aw, Henry, are you seriously asking me that? That's a deer. Just like an animal. Henry was looking at me in frustration. You know, I don't blame him. Our guy's been pretty flip and inconsiderate of other people. So far, Henry the pirate is the nicer guy and he murders people. But I was convinced that the captain knew I wasn't laughing at him maliciously. I was just a douchebag. It was just that I felt good around him. And sometimes I like to be mean to people I feel good around. And sometimes Henry said ridiculous things that I couldn't help making fun of. Sorry you're so stupid, Henry, but I love it. It was amazing that someone so bright, so smart, could be so innocent and stubborn. How in He murders people for a living! Oh, he just murdered five children! Such an innocent heart! That contrast caused me to search for him every night on the deck. Where are you? Where are you? Arr, it's a little ship. It's not hard to find me. And each time I found myself waiting more and more impatient for you, that moment of the day. Or at least that's what I told myself. That impatience to spend time alone with a Henry had nothing to do with that hungry expression I saw in his eyes. Sometimes as we ate dinner facing each other and shelled too long of a glance. Or the way the moonlight made his dark curls and his strange golden eyes shine. Yeah, our our new fiance probably gave up on us the moment she knew we were captured by a bunch of pirates. He's never coming back. Or with his voice, deep, masculine, at the same time so ethereal. Oh, like this? I'm a man! That's like a manly ghost voice. When he explains some mystery that had happened several centuries ago. I told myself that we were simply becoming friends, dangerous, and of an idea as that was we murdered people together with him. Because it was clear the captain wasn't going to ignore the death of his brother. We kind of have not broached that subject yet, you know? And that he was going to claim revenge on my anus. No matter how much he liked me, my head was going to end up adorning a pike if I couldn't get to a port soon. Ooh, that's not good. One night, perhaps two months after my arrival in the Bravo Kona, I woke up... I'm sorry for the guy who wrote the ship's name. I butchered it every time. 
I woke up with my unusual feeling of suffocation and being stalked. They're after me! Just... Wait, just because they're not after you doesn't mean you're paranoid. Something like that. I was waking up less and less often, which made it clear that I was becoming overly confident. And that night when I opened my eyes, there were another pair of eyes just a few inches from mine. That's a little creepy. A hand over my mouth muffled my cry of surprise. <laughs> You'll wake up, everyone! Because those beautiful eyes belong to him, I sat up in the hammock and followed Henry into his cabin. Oh, only because you insist, Captain! Inside, Henry lit an oil lamp. And still half asleep, I scanned the captain's room with my eyes. Scanning. 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 It was wide, about five meters by five. Damn you, metric system! No! Wait, what year is this? What year is this? Shouldn't we be using the Imperial system? <laughs> Where's my historical accuracy? How many hogsheads are, uh, does this area fill? Uh, wait, it was about five meters by five meters. With a curtain that separated the command room from Henry's bed in the poo-poo area. The toilet area? You just take, you, you hang your ass over the side and shoot it into the ocean. Oh, I probably shouldn't bring that up if we're gonna romance. The largest wall was occupied by a large bookcase, larger even than the one I had at home. Apart from that, there were several armchairs, chairs, and low tables. He- is that like a coffee table? He pulled a hat off a chair. Why is that hat wearing a chair? It's not a person! You gotta be watch- you gotta be careful those chairs, man. And tossed it on the floor, gesturing to me to take a seat. He remained standing and began pacing the room, his hands clasped behind his back and his brow furrowed. Arr, you know, Ian, from the moment she arrived, I noticed in you a certain uneasiness that I couldn't explain. Maybe it had something to do with the fact you murdered my shipmates? Maybe that makes someone a bit uncomfortable? I don't know, just throwing it out there? I was completely awakened. The moment had come! I had to flee. But where? I glanced at the cabin door. It was accessible just a couple of wide steps, and I could get through it before Henry reached me. Then I go up the ladder to the main deck, but I wouldn't have time to hoist the longboat and lower into the water before Henry stopped me. And even if I did, where would I go without food or water so far from the coast and trade routes? <clears throat> With the way Ian has been so far, I feel like Ian would say all this, What is my choice? My only other choice is to suck his dick now! <laughs> what? Ian? Why, why is that what you jump to? Don't judge me. It just seems like I'm, I'm playing the character. I like ladies. Actually, I do like ladies. Why don't they like me? Arr, during the day, you always avoid me. Then on the deck you talk to me with total freedom. Like a friend I've always wanted to friend. Hey, up, but during dinner... Oh god, he is a lonely pirate. Oops, I, I think I went backwards. Henry stopped before me nervously. What was he talking about? I was waiting for an allusion to Kingston, to the trial, to the hanging. But what did dinner have to do with it? Is this where I should broach the subject? He's like, I just want you to treat me like a friend. And I'm like, I murdered your brother. Kind of, by, through jury duty. Or during dinner. And afterwards, we're playing cards. You look at me in a way I couldn't fathom. How many fathoms? Not a single one. Oh, oh. My mouth was strangely dry. And my muscles seemed to be paralyzed. I pooped myself at that moment. <laughs> or until today, Ian. Oh, what's the smell? Oh. I think I finally understand these looks, and why I couldn't stop even looking at you either. Hen- Hen- Sorry, Henry. The captain swallowed. Oh, finally. I mean, wait, that's supposed to happen later. And though I could hardly believe that haughty and intelligent Henry Plank was nervous as a schoolboy, that's exactly what it seemed. I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest from the speed at which it was beating. Boom, 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 boom. My heart is weird. I think I need to see a doctor. Wait, I am a doctor! Arr, Ian. It's possible that in spite of me talents and me powers of observation, this time I'm wrong. And forgive me if that's the case. But I want to jolly your Roger. I mean, I promise you, if you're, if my conclusions are wrong, I promise you I will never mention it again. And uh, I, I appreciate it if you would do the same. I could murder you, but I wouldn't, probably. And that I hope you don't feel offended. You know what I like about the captain here? Murdering people, no problem. 
stealing from people, fine. But he doesn't want to offend. I... Okay, whatever. <laughs> Arr, although I understand, it may seem somewhat nauseating. Henry closed his eyes and turned his face away, his expression pained. I was about to get up and approach him, alarmed, when the captain regained control and turned to face me again. Look at me with your whore eyes! Ian, I think we have feelings for each other. Something different from sympathy or camaraderie, or even from friendship. We've been on this ship too long, friend. I like ladies. Clearly, with the way my character is constantly talking about your dreamy eyes, he's into ladies. I beg ye to confirm my observations are correct, or if, uh, on the contrary. Oh fuck it. Let's go full butt pirate. We'll confirm he's right. Yes! Yes, Jolly my Roger! Uh, please swap my poop deck! But fuck me! I mean, what? The captain's face frowned in confusion! Oh no, I read it wrong! Did I read it wrong? Was he gonna... <laughs> was he gonna ask me something totally different? No, this has gotta be where he's going. This has totally gotta be where he's going. Or I have just made the biggest faux pas of all time. He's gonna be like, no, I wanted you to be the first mate. Yes, you can make me... No, not like that. Quit! Really? I think you're right. I didn't realize until now, or the moment I saw you, or the moment I talked about your man titties, that I didn't want to become aware of it. But, but, and I hate to break it to my fiancé woman, who I really love. Arr, Ian, is it true? You don't know how happy you be making me. Please, do I get to be the pitcher? I have a feeling he's not going to let me be the pitcher. Henry hurried to come closer, his arms open and a welcoming hug. However, I still felt a knot in my throat that didn't let me breathe. I stopped him, resting my hands on his forearms. Why? Am I going to be a tease? The temptation of stroking his arms, arms, his shoulders, and making sure that it wasn't a dream. Uh, and it was really happy. It was like super strong, y'all. I felt dizzy and confused. Oh, oh, oh. That's him spinning around in a circle. I couldn't understand my feelings, but there was one thing I was sure of. Boner alert. I didn't need to tell Henry the truth before taking any further step. Arr, what's wrong? There's something I have to tell you first, Captain Henry. Arr, is it Captain Morgan? Do you like him better? Oh, or is it about your fiancé? I shook my head. No. No! The situation, no! It was absurd, but I couldn't help a small grin. Grin? No, I'm afraid that's not it, Captain. Henry? It's more serious than that. Two months ago, just before setting sail from Kingston, I was a part of a jury. Maybe our guy is smart. Maybe this is the time to broach it to him. We got him to, you know, be like, I got feelings for you. Yeah, I kind of killed your brother, but now you like me, so maybe you won't kill me. Henry looked at me with a neutral, cautious face. The person we sentenced to death, Henry, it was your brother, Jimmy James Pink. Like the sandwiches. Henry suddenly disappeared. I mean, turned around, giving me his back. Is this where I mount him? I don't understand. I, I've, I've never had a gay encounter. I'm straight. Is, is, is that assault if I mount him? Or is he inviting me? I'm, I don't understand a thing. Do I go for it? Arr, I understand. What? I, I can imagine how you feel. You must be really angry with me. And it's normal that you seek revenge. I'm sorry, Captain Henry. He turned to look me in the eye. His gaze was hard as me, and I'm expressionless. I see. It was surprising that you reacted so easy to my confession. But now I can see the reason. No, I really want to bone him. No, Henry, allow me. No, I wasn't manipulating you because I don't want to die. I mean, I don't want to die. I really don't want to bone him, but still. Arr, you see, you understand how I feel? Do you really understand how it feels when somebody plays with ye feelings? Oh, I hope that's not true. Oh, man. Is he gonna lay a guilt trip on me? But Henry! Henry! I note you, Henry, me. Don't please me. Don't... Wait, what? I mean, no, please. Don't say anything else. You wanted to save your life. I can understand that. I've said it inappropriate things. I ask you to never mention them in front of my men. Oh, no, I've told everybody you wanted to blow this wiener. Oh, in exchange for your silence, I'll let you go ashore in the first harbor we reach. Sweet. Please, Henry, hear me. We're free, Ian. Shut the fuck up and get out. You can go back to your fiancé you don't love or your parents or whatever. Please, Henry, hear me out. Arr, there's nothing to hear. 
You get what you want, your freedom! I also really hate money, if you want to give me money! Er, perhaps that was the only thing ye was after. All those knights talking on me poop deck. Ooh, to soften the heart of an evil pirate. Oh, I have feelings too. Oh, ah, uh, oh, ah, uh, you. I, I beg ye to leave. It's too hard. Oh, it's late and we should sleep for a few hours. Good night, Ian. Good night, Henry. What have I done? What have I done? Should I have said nothing, not telling Henry? My implication is his brother's death? No, certainly not. I wouldn't be able to respect myself. I don't... I kind of feel like, and I'm not a big proponent of lying, I'm a very big proponent of the truth, that maybe you wanted to wait until you're off the ship, though maybe this is going to get us off. I mean, what, I mean, get us away from the ship? I had a terrible migraine and a feeling of suffocation right when my fear of death had vanished. Maybe... Maybe Henry wasn't ready to hear that I felt the same as him. That he's mad at me? I too am mad at me. <laughs> Did I really feel the same? I wasn't even sure. I was afraid I'd reply to him before even considering my feelings. How could he not be aware of my doubts with him being so observant? You know, I think Henry is better without us. If we're the kind of person where we're like, he should just read my mind. That never works. That never works. Henry deserves someone better than Ian. I'm going to say it. I had disappointed him rushing into it like that. I just wanted him to rush into my port. A week later, the Bravo Kona assailed a ship bound for Kingston. Henry ordered me to pack my things up and join the crew of the sea ship. And that was my way, that way my steps led me back to Jamaica. Freedom. Freedom never tasted so bitter. And that's the end. This is our final end. I never got a boat in Captain Henry. I'm going to come back and my fiance is going to be so disappointed I showed up. Ian's gonna come back and all he's gonna talk about was Captain Henry. She'll be like, oh, it's the wedding on. Oh, I met Captain Henry. He had such dreamy eyes and curly hair and muscly arms and man titties. You're in a man, aren't you? No, not at all. But I dreamed of the way he would fuck my buttocks at night. You really are in a man. No, not at all. You don't understand, new fiance. You just don't understand men at sea. You don't understand seamen.